Absolutely. You take a look at the, the bottom of the graphic there, David Simmental, mm -hmm. almost 26 points per game, leads for a sixth, I believe, in the state, um, regardless of classification. And, you know, they've been there and done that. As you mentioned, they won the state championship last year. Yeah. Um, and not only did they win it, but they beat Valor by almost 30 points last year. I mean, just a very, very convincing victory. Right. And when you have a game like that on your resume and your best player returns, um, they're going to have their hands full. But if Trent Dykema plays the way he, you know, showcased this past weekend mm -hmm. and Silver Creek can play that stifling D that holds opponents under 50 points per game, they're going to give themselves a chance. Yeah. Alex Sandstrom mm -hmm. over at Mead, just in terms of a bigger guy at 6'6", who doesn't just get his work done inside. You know, he yeah. can stretch the floor. I've seen mm -hmm. him make, you know, a bevy of three-pointers in huge spots this year. But he'll also crash the glass, get offensive rebounds, put backs. So he's very, very versatile, and he could be, he could be a critical piece. Well, I just think that Silver Creek hasn't played a team of this caliber. I mean, you, you look at their record, 21-3. and three, Two of those losses are to Northridge. Yeah. And if me and you are going to sit here and say that Northridge um, can be beat by Meade on their home floor this weekend, and Meade's a team who got crushed by Valor, and Valor's a team who got crushed by Pueblo West. Yeah. I mean, Pueblo West is a team that, you know, we don't see a lot of those type of teams around here. Yeah. They're going to have a do-it-all guy in Simmental, but like you mentioned, he's not the only one. So even if he does, you know, have an off night or mm -hmm. is held below his average, I think Pueblo West can still get the job done. Well, I was really impressed. I think Coach Reese did a fantastic job, you know, being at the first meeting January 3rd, as he alluded to in the, in the interview, and to see where they've come on March 3rd. I thought the big difference, like I said last week, would be Meade's ability to beat the press, not give so many loose ball turnovers. And for large portions of the game, they did a great job. They took care of the ball. Yeah. They were able to beat the press. You saw Ward would respond pretty much every time um, anything went downhill for, for Meade. But... I think the biggest thing was there were the lapses. You know, they worked on it, they improved, they didn't lose right. by 26 points this time, but there were the lapses, and those couple times they lapsed um, to begin the second quarter when you saw the two dunks by, uh, by Sanders and the points right. in transition, and then to end the third on the 13-1 to one run, it was still just me. It was uh, Valor's ability to put that pressure on Meade full court that was the difference in the game. Thoughts on the 4A semifinals and you know, a team like Golden getting into the, in the Final Four? Yeah, going back to what we mentioned earlier, I, I like Valor as heavy favorites mm -hmm. in that matchup against Golden. Golden, interestingly, you know, they beat Evergreen. You and I talked off air about that game a lot. Evergreen had a better overall record, yeah. a better conference record, and had beaten Golden twice, twice in the regular season. <laughs> yeah. Um, somehow Golden got that game at home in their gym, which was a surprise to us based on those things yeah. I just mentioned. But uh, they were able to get it done. But I like Valor a lot in that matchup. I think that was the easier side of the bracket, mm -hmm. really in its entirety. On the other side, it's just a really interesting matchup because we both know that Pueblo West is a very good game, very good team. Excuse me. So for Pueblo South to defeat them, you know they're a very good team. Right. But Lewis Palmer and these Scott brothers just keep getting the job done. Right. They're on the fourth and final brother, Joel Scott. He leads the team in scoring at 13 points per game. And they went up to DeEvelyn mm -hmm. and beat DeEvelyn. You mentioned DeEvelyn has been in the final, or excuse me, the Elite Eight in five of the last seven years, yeah. which is just impressive. But that tells you a lot about Lewis Palmer. They, they keep getting to this spot, too. They've been in so many Final Fours in the last right. five years, mm -hmm. led by a different Scott brother from Josh Scott to Jordan Scott to Jonathan Scott, and finally to Joel Scott this year. So that's going to be a tough one. I think I will uh, pick Pueblo South in that matchup mm -hmm. for a Pueblo South-Valor Christian final. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. Yeah, I agree with you. 